So cocoa rods, rain, hail, and snow. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what we're looking at and how they're used to measure rain, hail, and snow? Sure. Well, we've got these uh, what are considered manual instruments, meaning it takes a human being and their eyeballs to actually take the measurement. And uh, to begin with, uh, the rain gauge actually comes with three different pieces. You've got a, uh, a funnel, you've got an inner tube, and you've got this outer tube. As the rain goes into the funnel, it, it, it filters into this inner tube here and your first inch goes all the way up to the top of this thing here. So we've got 100 tick marks with accuracy to the hundredth of an inch for your first inch. After that first inch, the water can actually overflow and begin to fill up this outer nice. cylinder. Close to 12 inches of rain can be uh, measured in this entire rain gauge. Moving on to hail, we actually use a, a, quite a highly scientific piece of equipment. It's just a piece of styrofoam covered with tin foil. The pad is laid flat and the hail strikes, and each of these dents is the impingement of some hail feature. Exactly. Okay. We can not only uh, see the different sizes, mm -hmm. but you can also count the number, and you can even see the angle of impact. Finally, when it comes to snow, we actually have a couple of different things. Of course, we like to measure the depth of the snow. And, but, but what's more important is actually the water content of the snow. Um, oftentimes, a snow event can uh, build up on a roof and it can collapse. And that's obviously because of it's got a lot of water in it. So during the winter time, we remove the funnel and the inner tube. And you let the snow just fall right into your okay. rain gauge. We bring it inside and we melt it and then you basically pour that water into your inner tube and right. now you know the liquid amount of water okay. that was in your snow. Finally is an additional instrument here and this is actually, uh, this is called the ET gauge standing for evapotranspiration. Okay. Instead of evaporation that comes out of a body of water, we're measuring evaporation that comes out of plants and trees and, and grass and, and even animals. The ET gauge starts out full of water and we okay. measure how much is evaporating out of, the, out of the gauge. And so comparing the two, how much you're receiving versus how much you're losing allows you to calculate a water balance. At this point, we have 20,000 uh, active volunteers across the entire United States and as well as Canada, Puerto Rico, and uh, just recently the Bahamas. There are lots of weather stations across the country, but they're still spread out, and you might have a rainstorm go right in between oh, them. I see. And yeah. we've got plenty of examples where we've got a volunteer with a Kokoraz gauge that is nowhere near any of the other sites that might have gotten even zero precipitation. And we, sh we look on the Kokoraz map, and lo and behold, there's over seven inches of rain at that, at that spot. The National Weather Service never would have known wow. had it not been for that Kokoraz observer at that area. The, the fact that people can check their gauge and contribute to the greater good, I and mean, you never know when your gauge is gonna be the one that really makes the difference.